Hi, I'm Tom Bragg from Cambridge Carbon Footprint. This video is about using this thermal imaging camera, which is the Fluke TIR, and it's available to borrow when you've been trained in using the camera and, and interpreting the images. If you're borrowing this slimmer TIR 105 camera, then see a separate video. So you turn on the TIR thermal imaging camera by holding the middle button until it beeps. Then you get this opening screen. And then in a bit, it shows a thermal image in the middle, but it's just noise until you open this lens cap. This is the thermal imaging lens, and this is the visible camera. And now if I turn it and point it over here, here is my cup of tea, thermal image. So before we take thermal images, we have to do some checks. Look in the top left of the screen and the battery indicator here is all green, I think. So it's in quite well charged battery. Then look at the top right and here it's saying auto which is the best simple way to use the camera. You can change to manual by holding this left hand F1 button. And then now it says manual. And you'll see when I look at my cup of tea, it's um, all a bit different. Uh, most of it is too hot to scale. And if I, so if I hold F1 again, I can turn it back to auto and now we've got the normal image back again. Before we capture images, we need to check that they're going to be saved in the right file format. We need the menus to do this. If I press F1, it brings up these menus along the bottom of the screen and I keep pressing until it cycles through the different menus and I'm waiting to see an offering of file format. And there it is finally on the right. So that means this right hand button will select the file format. And we have a choice here. On the left it's showing BMP standing for bitmap, which is what I suggest we use. And um, over here, I could select IS2. The problem with IS2 is it's a Fluke proprietary format that is only for use with their SmartView software. And so if you're not going to use that, then you must choose BMP here. So when that's um, selected like that, you hit Done. Now we know that we've got the right file format. Finally, let's check that the display is showing a thermal image in the middle and a visible image around the outside, which is what we want. If it's not showing that, then go through the, through the menus, press F2. In fact, we want this option here, IR Fusion. Select that and at the moment, we've got this kind of picture-in-picture picture selection. If I go down here, it becomes all infrared, which is harder to interpret. So I recommend going back up here. We want this option with uh, a picture-in-picture. Picture. This camera has manual focus, and be careful not to take lots of images that are out of focus. Uh, like this mug at the moment is out of focus. You get it in focus by turning this focus wheel and I turn it until the image is sharp like that. One good way of checking is that it's in focus when the visible and infrared images align. So looking at the mug handle when it, they align like that, it's now in focus. 
But if you're taking mostly more distant images, then you probably don't need to keep readjusting the focus. OK, so we're ready to take and store some images. If we want to capture this mug, we, we need to pull this trigger uh, like this. When we're looking at it, it's in focus. Pull the trigger. And you'll see now it's offering us option here called store, which means when I press the left hand button, then we will store this picture like this. And it gives us the confirmation now that that image is stored. So remember, just pulling the trigger does not in itself take a picture. When you've got some images that you want to get out of the camera, you open this flap and here is an SD card which you press to eject. Your images should be on that card. If your laptop or device hasn't got a slot for cards like this, in the camera bag there will be this adapter. Slot the card in and now you can insert this into the USB port of your device. And the images are handled just like the files, image files from your digital camera. So those are the basics for using this camera. You can find more information on the thermal imaging pages of the Cambridge Carbon Footprint website, including the user manual for the camera, our procedures on borrowing the cameras and being COVID safe, please follow those. And also a thermal imaging guide which will remind you how to interpret the images you get. And so good luck in revealing where some buildings are leaking heat.